Testing, testing, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hi, guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of the metaverse and everything in relations to virtual reality. Today, very exciting video, as I will be giving you a walkthrough as to how to run your games from your HP Reverb G2 to your Steam VR, as well as some quick tips for some graphics as well to, you know, get those little frame rates to be a little faster and smoother too. But by the way, we are giving away a brand new HP Reverb G2 sponsored by HP. So they will be sending this to you as well as a brand new pair of cyber shoes with the whole entire gaming station with the cyber chair and the cyber carpet as well. And a 50 US dollar voucher that you will be able to redeem for your Oculus Meta Quest store, your Viveport or your Steam VR store too. So that is very awesome. Do make sure to unlabel your bell after you subscribe as you could be notified as one of the lucky winners. And also, of course, link in the description below as to how to enter and when we're doing the actual giveaway. All right, so let's just transition over to today's video, which is all about how to help you guys to basically get you all set up so you can run all your various different games using your HP Reverb G2 with Steam VR. So of course, the first thing that you wanna do is go to the Steam VR's website and make sure to install Steam. Uh, if you don't see this page, normally it's at the very top here, uh, around the center of the screen, I guess. And then you just click on this and it will lead you to this page and then you just install Steam. I do recommend, however, uh, for you to install your Steam on your NVMe drive so that every time you install all your various different games, you install them in your NVMe because it will mean that you'll just get that much, a little bit faster frame rate, smoother gameplay. So if you do have an NVMe drive, sorry, do that. If not, get yourself an NVMe drive. It only costs a few hundred dollars and it will really help you to get faster and smoother Gameplay is my recommendation. Anyway, do know that every single PC, of course, is very different. Some of the advice I might give you today may not be relevant to you. However, generally speaking, through my experience at the comments that have come back to the VR Essentials YouTube channel, it has helped most people. All right, but just a little disclaimer there, just in case. Um, so after you've installed that now, of course, you will have to go to your Microsoft Store and install, of course, the Mixed Reality Portal. If you have not done so, uh, you will need to do this. And of course, after you download the Mixed Reality Portal uh, in your HP Reverb G2, you have to go through a tutorial, which doesn't last very long. And once you're done with that, then of course, if you power your headset on, normally this page will come up automatically. Uh, or if it doesn't, then simply go and click on the logo to open up the program. And once it's open, you do not need at this moment in time to open Steam or Steam VR, by the way. So first thing is open this program, then go to your settings on the bottom left-hand side, click on settings, and then go to startup and desktop. Now, the one that you want to enable it is preferable to have it enabled, especially if you're gonna run Steam VR to run most of your games, then just enable this one here. It says start Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR automatically when Mixed Reality Portal is launched. So this is what you'd want to do if for whatever reason you do not want Steam VR to be launched when you start you know, your, your, your Windows Mixed Reality, then by all means, just click it off it is that simple guys so let's just assume that it is on now just a little quick tip by the way if you want to see or you want to record footage inside of your windows mixed reality um, for whatever reason for example i want to do it now to show you what's inside of my headset then all i have to do is click on this little play button here at the bottom in the center and then normally what will happen is if I just put my finger on the center inside of my headset first, you can see the little Windows plus Y thing that just comes up. So let me just click that. And then I can just click here and then normally you will see inside of Steam VR because naturally Steam VR, since I had already enabled it, means that it had already loaded inside of my headset. So just to show you very quickly that I'm holding my headset here in my hands basically. And then I'm just moving around the headset here. There we go. Let me just make it straighter. And then you can see 
all your various different apps right in front of you. They will all be there. And then all you have to do is use your uh, triggers, your controllers. If I just put a controller on the front. So let me just switch on one of the controllers. There we go. Little buzzing sound with a little LED lights. And then normally it should pop up. Okay, there we go, it's there. And then all you have to do is basically point it towards one of the games and then like this one. And then, you know, if we go to all space, you just click on it and then you just click on launch and that's it. But before you do that, guys, before you do that, I am going to give you some graphic tips. So let's not do that first. Let's just go back to the windows. Here we go. Let's go back to home. Okay, so now we're inside again of the Windows Mixed Reality Home. So just to let you know, just a quick tip, by the way, that if you see it's asking you to look right and then look left and then look down, all you have to do is on your keyboard, press the Windows button plus the Y and automatically you don't have to do that. It will just put you in here because it can be quite frustrating to look right, look left and look down. Sometimes it doesn't work. So just a quick tip there. Now, if you want to access SteamVR from here because you didn't have, you didn't do the previous steps or you just need to access it from here, just click on the logo button on your controller and then go here on the right hand side where it says all apps and then just look for with the arrows until you see Steam VR. So it's here, so I could have gone there. Steam VR and then what's going to happen is that a little window will pop up like so. So all you then have to do is click on the, basically on the thing here. Just click on it and it will, st it will start to say loading. Another tip guys, make sure you don't have any lights uh, bright lights especially that are directed towards your VR headset otherwise you will lose tracking so I do highly suggest that your lighting uh, bounces off the walls or comes from the ceiling and don't put a light like I just did because I'm recording the video right in front of me or you may have some tracking issues with your controllers. So then we're back inside of the actual app and then once more all you would have to do is press on the buttons. However, before you do this, if you want to have better, smoother gameplay, this is based on more than three or four thousand hours of gameplay using the HP Reverb D2 for about 15 months now guys, just to let you know. So um, what I would do is click on one of the buttons, not the logo button, but on the this button here which is not the A on the other side. So on the right hand side of the logo button that you can see here, you click on this button here and then you will see the Steam menu that will appear. Now what I recommend you to do, especially if you don't have a super powerful PC, I recommend you click on home. If everything is kind of like jittery and all these kind of things and it's slowly like, oh no, what's going on? Go to video settings. So of course, if everything is jittery, you're just gonna have to be very patient, move extremely slowly. <laughs> Go to video settings. Make sure you don't move your head whatsoever, especially if it's jittery. And then where you see um, custom resolution multiplier, make sure that this is on Steam VR Home. Just bring it down to the resolution of the actual VR headset. Now the resolution per eye is 2160 by 2160. So you just bring it to as close as possible as you can. 2140 is absolutely fine. And then you just close and normally speaking, after you return to home, it should be fine. It should be working. If it's not, after you've done that, all you do is click on the Windows Mixed Reality logo, go back to your home and then click on it once more. So once we're loading the Steam VR and then we go back inside of the home, then what we can do, so it's just loading at the moment, we can go back to the Steam VR panel, go to home, and you look at video settings, normally it's registered. In fact, it registered 2168 by 2120, which is absolutely fine. So this is what I recommend you to do. Now, if you still have any issues, just bring it down to 50%. And of course, if you have no issues and the graphics are still good, uh, or you just don't have any issues, but you want more graphics, then just bring it slightly to maybe 100%. Uh, or, or Sorry, if you had issues at 100%, then bring it maybe to 70% or 75% and stay there. For those, however, who are on 100% and have no issues whatsoever, and you want to play, let's say, some audio trip or some big screen or blast on, 
or you want to do some Phobos VR or some, you know, against or Neos or, you know, whatever, Racket NX or Sensor. And, and, you know, I would recommend you do the same thing if in those apps you have any graphic issues whatsoever, just go to your video settings from the Steam VR home, not from the app. You will have to come back here to get this done. So let's just say that I wanted to play some audio trip. Then all I would have to do, and I had some issues, things were jittery, and it didn't matter how low I, I, I brought the graphics inside of the app itself. Then I would just bring it down here to as close as possible to 2160 by 2160. I would just simply close this, return to home, and then load the app again. And normally my experience is fine. And as I just mentioned, if let's say you wanted to, uh, so we go back to Audio Trip. Let's say that it was working absolutely fine at this resolution, but I had an issue at 100%, but I still wanted to get some better performance. Then what I could do is simply boost it maybe to 78 or 60 until it starts to become jittery again is basically my point. Now, the next tip I have to give to you for Oculus, sorry, for HP Reverb G2 Windows Mixed Reality owners is click on this thing here where you have the Mixed Reality logo. Go to Graphics and disable your motion vector. Now, some apps will work better with motion vector, which basically means it will create some pixels that are not existing. So for every frame, it will create a frame in between, which will boost your frame rate. So it will only show, for example, 45 frames per second, but it's actually running at 90 frames per second. However, there are some issues with some apps. So I highly suggest you first disable it. And if you don't have any issues when it's disabled and your game is running pretty well, keep it disabled. If, however, your game is not running very smoothly when it's disabled, after you've done the, uh, the video resolution part, then all you have to do is click on motion vector, never click on auto, it doesn't work well whatsoever. Steam VR per app does not work well whatsoever. I highly suggest you either click motion vector or disabled, but only use motion vector if you feel that after you've done the previous step and disabled, you try on disabled first, it wasn't running very smoothly, then try motion vector, but only try it as a second step. Initially, just keep it disabled first because normally apps work better with it being disabled, but there are some sim car racing games like Automobilista 2 or ACC where you can use it with motion vector using reprojection. And we've done other videos on the channel for that. So do go and check them out on the VR Essentials YouTube channel. Now, the other thing, of course, once you've launched the app, go inside of the app settings, the graphic settings, and always start off your settings with low first. Always start with low and then incrementally increase your settings one by one, little by, you know, little by little, because every app is different and will require a different set of graphic settings. If, why, I, all right, guys, so let me just log out of VR. So I'm just going to give you a little bit more graphic tips here to make sure that your apps are running as smooth as possible. The first thing is, by the way, if you do have the Xbox S Pass or software installed on your computer, make sure that there are no background things that are running. Disable anything to do with background stuff inside of your Xbox S settings i don't have xbox as pass i got rid of it because it was actually creating too many issues for me so i just decided to whoosh, the hell with it and just get rid of it all together but just make sure that anything running in the background is disabled the other thing that you want to do is just type in graphics inside of your search bar so graphics here we go Go to your graphic settings and make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is also turned off. Don't have any background stuff going. It is really important. And then also for graphic performance preference, you can also choose to browse and add apps in there. It does help, uh, although I didn't find it helps greatly but apparently it can do some help. So do it if you feel that you need to do that. And then the other thing, of course, that you can do is go to your, for those who have an NVIDIA card, so if we just go to the GeForce experience, 
And then all you have to do is go to the actual, so once it's loaded, go to the settings, which is up here. Make sure that you also disable, um, disable any experimental stuff, and then also anything running in the background, automatically download drivers updates uh, here below at the bottom part. I don't know if you can see it. Let me just bring it up for you. And then let me just bring that down. Okay, so down here at the bottom, make sure that this is also disabled. You do not want to have anything running in the background whatsoever. Uh, you can have notifications that doesn't generally cause that many issues. Uh, if you go to games and apps, also automatically optimize newly added games and applications. Make sure that this is disabled, not enabled. Otherwise, it's going to run your stuff all the time and it's going to create some lagging and jittery things as well. And then for the drivers, generally speaking, I've always updated my drivers whenever there was an update available and it hasn't caused any issues whatsoever. So those basically is how you would run, you know, Steam VR and also some of the other things inside, um, you know, and then let me just finish finally one more tip to give you. Of course, make sure that you disable all the various different programs. Make sure you're only running Steam VR on your Windows Mixed Reality only uh, in your actual VR and your computer whilst you're in VR, otherwise you will get issues. And then let me just open uh, NVIDIA again, go to the control panel. And I'm just going to show you very quickly the settings that I've actually used for my stuff. So if you go to uh, the adjust image settings with preview, generally speaking, I use the advanced 3D system image. It hasn't caused any issues. For manage the 3D settings, normally speaking, for NVIDIA anyway, I turn everything off except for anti-aliasing mode, I leave to application controlled. And also for CPU, GPU, I press on all because it's going to choose my card. For OpenGL, I put auto. Power management, I prefer maximum performance. Shader cache, driver default. For texture filtering, I put on clamp. Texture filtering quality, I put on quality. Everything else is off. And then for virtual reality pre-rendered frames, I generally put on three because my card can handle it. And for virtual reality uh, variable rate super sampling, I put on adaptive. Hopefully this video has helped you. Guys, I'll see you in the comments below and in another video very soon.